A common size analysis, which is also known as vertical analysis, is a simple tool used by analysts and investors to identify drivers of growth in a company, compare performance over different periods, and compare companies of different sizes. Each line item in the financial statement is expressed as a percentage of a base item, and it can be performed on the income statement, balance sheet, and sometimes the cash flow statement. In this tutorial, I'll focus on the income statement and balance sheet. Each line item in the income statement is expressed as a percentage of total revenue, and each line item in the balance sheet is expressed as a percentage of total assets. Now let's prepare a common size income statement and balance sheet for Johnson & Johnson, and afterwards we'll compare its income statement to one of its competitors, Pfizer. If this sounds interesting, keep watching. Here's the four-year historical income statement for J&J, &J, and the vertical analysis will be calculated in column G to J. Each line item will be divided by total revenue. We'll start with 2017. Equals B5 divided by B5. Since the base is total revenue, you have to lock row 5, so the formula can be copied to other cells. I'll press F4 twice to lock the row. The first one will lock the row and column reference. And when I press again, it locks the row. Enter. Now we can copy and paste the formula to the remaining cells. I'll paste as formulas to retain the cell format. So Ctrl C to copy. Select the range. Now that they are all selected, you can right click and paste as formulas. Or press Alt E S F. OK. I'll delete this because it's referring to empty cells. There you go. At a glance, we can see the trend in margins. Management can use this to identify items that are outside the set benchmark and take appropriate actions. I understand J&J strives to maintain its profit margins through cost reduction programs and productivity improvement. Let's take a look at the balance sheet. All the line items will be divided by total assets. We'll start with current assets, so equals B6 divided by B17. Remember, you have to lock row 17. Press F4 twice to lock the row. Enter. Now we can copy and paste the formula to the remaining cells. Ctrl C to copy, select the range, press Alt E S F to paste as formulas, and OK. I'll delete the formulas referring to empty cells. Cool. At a glance, we can see the largest component of assets. You can see how current assets, current liabilities, and other line items as a percentage of total assets compare with previous periods. Take a look at cash. Ordinarily, you would say that cash declined over the period. However, it will be more insightful to add short-term investments because it appears there was a reallocation of cash to short-term investment. So if I add both, you see that it was relatively stable in the first three years with marginal increase in 2020. Now let's see how j, &J compares with Pfizer using the common size income statement. The income statement of Pfizer is on a separate tab in this workbook and I already prepared the common size income statement. On another tab, I have the income statement of both companies side by side. These companies are different in size. Pfizer's total revenue is about 50% of J&J's revenue, so comparing both companies in absolute terms will be difficult. However, a common size analysis will make it easier to compare them. At a glance, we can see that Pfizer has higher gross margins because its cost of revenue is much lower compared to J&J's. This might be as a result of increasing costs due to inflation, fluctuations in currency exchange rate, because they are multinational companies, and the product mix would also have an impact on the gross margin. Look at the cost items though. Pfizer's costs are higher compared to J&J. &J. The proportion of revenue spent on R&D is much higher in Pfizer than J&J. &J. Overall, operating income was stable over the period for J&J, &J, while Pfizer's varied over the period. 
Pfizer's net income is all over the place. However, in the recent period, there's only a marginal difference between the two. We can also put this information on a chart for easy comparison. I use the simple data validation here for easy selection of the line items. And I used index and match to look up the values because it works on any Excel version. Now we can insert a chart. I'll delete the text here to make Excel pick the correct range for the chart. Press Alt F1 to insert a chart. Now I can select the item. I learned that trick from John Pelter at Excel Weekend 7. <laughs> Click on any of the bars and press Ctrl 1 to change the overlap to 0%. Add data labels from the chart element icon and remove grid lines. Let's link the title to the chart. Click on the title, go to the formula bar and type equal to A21. Press enter. Now we can select any item to view the trend over the years and further investigate reasons for outliers. To wrap this up, common size analysis is very useful and very simple to prepare. However, it can be misleading for businesses that are impacted by seasonal fluctuations. That's all for today. Please subscribe, leave a comment and click the notification bell so you don't miss the next video on financial analysis. Thanks for watching. Bye.